gull wing design raised the fuselage above most of the wing and that allowed them the use of a 12 foot propeller. Who comes through again, gaining speed and pulls up to the left. There's a quarter roll on the way up. All around and over the top and back down. Says he's going to do a loop this time, and that means he's going to need a lot of speed, so he's a big dive. That big two ton engine on the front of the airplane pulling it down. The engine's an R 2800 of 18 cylinders, 2,000 or more horsepower, depending on the variant. Once again, though, when you get up in the top of that loop, you're not flying very fast. You have to be very, very careful. Corsairs in the Pacific flew from both the land and carriers. The Marine Corps first flew them in combat from the land. It was feared the power and limited forward visibility would make it dangerous on a carrier. That was overcome, of course. Corsair went on to totally outclass the Japanese Zero. In fact, the Japanese named it the Whistling Death because of the sound of the air going through the wing-mounted oil coolers as it dove into attack. Up again, again, over that, that loop. Down, down the 45 the degree line, you're gonna roll the right, right side up with a two point roll. In one yeah. half of what's known as a keeping it. During World War II, Corsair shot down 2,140 enemy planes and only lost 189 of her own. That is a kill ratio of 11 to 1. Remarkable. They were also used in Korea in nighttime attacks on supply convoys because they could loiter over the battlefield longer than the newer jets. And in Korea, a Marine Corps pilot made the first and only MiG kill by a Corsair, shot down a MiG-15 in September 52. Other nations that used the Corsair include Indochina, Suez, and Algeria. Some were even used in the late 60s by the military in some South and Central American countries. Production like this thing was 11 years. They were built by both Goodyear and Brewster, longer than any other U.S. prop fighter. The last one made it to Dallas in 1952. In fact, at that point, Goodyear was working on what was known as the F2G model, and it was powered by, get ready for this, the 28-cylinder R4360, 4,360 cubic inches and 3,600 horsepower. Ultimately, though, that project was canceled in 1945. About 40 Corsairs still flying. Blue's airplane is an FG-1D built by Goodyear. It's a World War II vet. It flew off the USS Benjamin William in 1945. It was discovered in a New Zealand plane graveyard in 1971 and flies today, he says, thanks to a lot of hard work and more than a few parts from other Corsair airframes. See that speed building up as it comes down around that turn. Hear it whistling? And he takes the airplane slowly around. Rolling slowly with the airplane is more difficult than and doing it in a controlled fashion. It's more difficult to roll the airplane fast. Because it does take a lot more coordination to just get the engine around. Thank you. 
did you hear that whistling noise during the dive? I heard it out there to the left as Lou came through. And that's where the whistling death noise uh, name came from. By the way, the thing that distinguished the Corsair from other airplanes was the tail hook for landing on the carrier. Look real close under the back of the airplane to see the tail hook is extended. It landed on that carrier and had to snag one of the cables to keep from flipping off the other end of that short, short deck. Usually they'd go for the third cable. <laughs> 